Hi everyone, this is Dan Freeman. I'm a Dub Spot instructor and Ableton certified trainer. And today we're at Dub Spot, and I want to talk today about vocal processing with Ableton Live. I've been playing in New York for the last couple of years in an electro funk band, my group Comandante Zero. And we've come up with a couple of ways to process vocals using the laptop and Ableton. So today I've brought along my live rig, uh, what I use to uh, process vocals and tracks. And even though it may look pretty intricate, uh, it's something that I've developed over the last couple of years. But the fundamental kind of chain is actually pretty simple. So the way you want to set up your vocals going into the laptop, a lot of people make the mistake of kind of going straight into a laptop, which can lead to feedback issues, and they struggle with it. Uh, one thing that I've worked with is this. So we start with the microphone. So microphone, XLR, and I take the microphone into this box right here. This is just this is actually a TC Helicon pedal. But what it has, which is I think very important for your signal going to the laptop, is it has a preamp and it has a compressor. So I'm running XLR from my preamp compressor uh, into the Motu Ultralight. And what that does is that's going to convert the audio to digital so that we can use it in Ableton. When I first set up this setup and, and started running vocals through, uh, through Ableton, I just ran it out and converted it with a chord, quarter inch to XLR. And it sounded great in my rehearsal studio, which is pretty small. Now, the problem was that when I got to a venue, it, it was incredibly noisy, and the sound men were like, what's going on with your signal? You want to take the quarter inch out of your sound card and make sure you run it through a DI box as soon as possible. So right here, I have a DI box, and this is where I convert the unbalanced, which is what's coming out of the sound card, going through the quarter inch, into a balanced output. And so this converts it quickly to XLR, and it really cuts down on the noise of the signal going to the house. So once you have your sound card plugged in, then we're ready to configure in Ableton. Now just one piece of advice I would give is to use a Firewire sound card if you're going to be doing um, live audio, running your vocals through. It, it just, in my experience, it tends to be more stable than, uh, than USB. Once we, we load up Ableton, and the first thing that we want to do is we're going to basically be running our vocals through an audio track. And so we're going to hit uh, Option Command I, which is going to bring up the audio ins and outs uh, in the tracks within Ableton. Now, another option would just simply be to hit the I.O. button, uh, which you'll find right here on the lower right. And this will also uh, bring up the ins and outs. We're going to go to audio from right here and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to lives preferences and for the audio input device we're gonna, we have a couple options and we're going to make sure we choose the the sound card which in my case is the Motu Ultralight MK3 both as an input device and as an output device. In this case, I've already chosen it. Now, another thing that I would strongly recommend is this, and it's an important control here, is the buffer size. When you're working with live audio uh, and going through the laptop, you want to keep your buffer low. So that calls for either use either 128 or 256. I, I like to use 256, and there's really no noticeable latency there with my laptop. But you can also try um, 128. If you start getting higher than that, then you may experience latency, which is kind of a delay between when you put the vocal signal into the laptop and the sound it makes. Now that you've uh, set up the audio input and output device, we're going to go to the in-out section of the audio track. And it's going to ask you where your audio from is going to come from. You want to choose external in. Now, I've routed the microphone into input 1, which is the XLR in the front. So here I'm going to choose 1. The next thing you're going to do 
is for live performance, you want to hit monitor in. And notice that when we hit monitor in, the track is going to turn orange and a little microphone will appear. If I take my mic, test, 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 we have audio coming in to the laptop. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to choose where the audio should go. Because as of right now, we're not hear really hearing anything. So I've set this up so that, first of all, we're going to want to run it out. We're going to actually want to run the audio also out through the sound card. So we're going to choose external out. And I've set up 8 to be going to the house. So I'm going to choose 8. Test, one, two, one, two. So now we have the vocals going through. And, and as you can hear, there's not really a noticeable latency going on. Now, to set up a vocoder in Ableton Live, the first thing you want to do is we're going to go to uh, the device browser. We're going to open up the audio effects folder. And we're going to double click or drag our vocoder into the audio file. When I speak into the uh, audio track, I'm getting a sound like this, which is not exactly the uh, kind of the classic uh, vocoder sound. So a vocoder has two parts to it. There's the part which is your voice, which is known as the modulator. And then there's the part that provides the harmonic information, which is known as the carrier. To set up a carrier, we create a MIDI track. In this case, there's one here. And we're going to need an instrument. Uh, and what the instrument is going to do, it's, gonna, it's a synth within live, and it's just going to give us a chord. So here I'm going to choose analog. So you want to drop analog uh, into the MIDI track. So here I have a, a keyboard hooked up uh, to this MIDI track, really just to help demonstrate this. If I want to hear the keyboard, we've got to do the same thing. We're going to choose audio 2, and we're going to choose external out. And I'm going to choose track 8 again, which is So that's what I have right now uh, from the analog. The first thing that you want to do when you set up an analog to act as your vocoder carrier, you're going to have to go in and change the amp envelope. So we go to the amp section of the analog. And right here, you're going to see the envelope, the basic um, ADSR envelope. So right now, the notes are very short. For a vocoder, a good vocoder carrier, you want long tones. So we're going to raise the decay and sustain so that the notes now sound like this. From here, we're going to go back to our audio track. And the crucial part of Live's vocoder is this menu right here. So here you have four choices. Live's vocoder gives you four choices of where to get really kind of information from. We're going to choose external. And when it says audio from, we're going to choose the analog that we just created. Once you do that, you want to go back to your carrier track. And we're going to shut that down. So you're actually not hearing what the analog is doing. So when I'm hitting it, nothing's coming out. But now, when I hold down a chord on the keyboard, and I speak into the mic, now I have a vocoder sound. Test one, two. This is Live's vocoder. We love Dubspot. So there are a couple controls within vocoder that you want to adjust uh, that are going to give you kind of some sonic possibilities with the, uh, with the vocoder. So we're going to go through a couple of them. The first thing that you may want to play around with is the bands. Now, if you have fewer bands, then you're going to get more of kind of a classic old school vocoder sound. So if we set to four bands, I tend to like settings more around 20 bands because I find it's a good compromise be, you know, between that kind of old school robot sound and but yet makes the lyrics actually intelligible. So this is what 20 bands sounds like. If we increase the bands to 40, again, it's just a different color. So this is 40 bands. This is what 
40 band sounds like. Now, something else that I, I do when I set up a vocoder is right here you see the range controls. I move the range up to about 250 hertz just because essentially it, it acts as a, as a high pass filter and I don't want that kind of the low information really uh, interfering with the rest of the mix of what's going on. Here you have the live vocoder gives you an option of uh, precise or retro and again different sounds. So here's the retro. This is what retro sounds like. This is what precise sounds like. Two different kind of options there. The gate I find also very useful. Uh, what the gate will do is if you set the gate higher, some of the kind of the, the noise from, especially in live performance, from the other instruments, from you, know, you talking, et cetera, et cetera, are not going to be picked up. So watch what happens if I set the gate. I like to set mine around minus 40. So test one, two. So it's going to pick up that, but if I move away from the mic, it doesn't pick up the sound. Now if I have the gate off, test, test, one, two, test, 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 test. You can still see it's picking up uh, information. So we're going to set that to uh, minus 40. Right here, the formant knob also gives you some kind of nice control over your vocoder sound. And if you move the knob above zero, I guess you get more of like the female vocoder. And if you move the knob lower uh, than zero, so I tend to keep mine centered, but it can be a really cool uh, effect as well. The dry wet control right here is also really important because you can mix in your voice. Right now I have it at 100%. So at 100% all you hear is vocoder. But if I move this down, say to 50%, now you can hear my voice mixed in too. Obviously at 0%, we don't hear any vocoder, it's just my voice. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is, is a technique for essentially freeing yourself from the keyboard. One thing that I do when I perform live with the vocoder is I create a vocal arrangement in MIDI. And so this is one of the powerful things about using Live's vocoder a as a live performance effect, is that you can create whole vocal arrangements which have multiple voices and in which the voices come exactly when you want them to come in. Now, the technique for doing that exists in Live's arrangement view. So what I do in order to create a vocal arrangement is actually pretty simple. I take the track that I'm gonna be working with, in this case, it's Sudden Entropy, the instrumental. And then down here, I create a MIDI track, and the analog is the carrier, as I go through the track itself. So for example, I know that when I sing, I'm gonna sing on, start singing on bar 12, and it's gonna build as we kind of go through the first verse, and then on the hook, I've added multiple vocoder takes. And the way you really build that is you create a MIDI track, you know, stretching across the area of the song you want to sing. You double click on it, and if you notice that the bars on top of the MIDI clip, they align with the bars on the uh, audio track. So it's just simply creating the arrangement there, the vocal arrangement, and then once I'm done with that, I just simply copy and paste it back so that it's in the same scene as the uh, audio track. So that's how you set up Ableton Live to 
process vocals uh, to get vocals into Ableton and to build a vocoder, and then use the vocoder in live performance without being tied to the keyboard. So my name is Dan Freeman. You can find more of my stuff at danfreeman.com or at comandantezero.com. Stay tuned for more videos and tutorials at dubspot.com. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, Dubspot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore Dubspot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.